Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Isle of Man in the UK. This is John and Mike's MMA Corner. I am joined right now with a man who's stepping back into the cage. David Lee, you've had a, I'd say, a bit of a break, it seems. Uh, a long break. Have you been bulking up? Is this what it is? You've been getting buffed up in the gym, getting yourself all nice and uh, muscular again, like a bodybuilder or something. What's what's the score? Why have you been out the scenes for so long? Uh, well, I've just been um, setting up, re- repositioning my business, like my, my gym. So... Um, yeah, I got a lot of guys that fight with us now, so it's um, most of my concentration will go on them. So getting them prepared and stuff. So we moved gyms maybe like about a, a year or so ago, maybe yeah, a year and a half ago. So we'll just while that was all setting up and while that was like uh, in this transitional period, there was no really there was no really opportunity really for me to fight. And last year I had I did have three fights kind of lined up, but they all fell through, which was which was a little bit. Um, frustrating so when this one come up it was it was perfect good timing I was going to say yeah, it, it is a bit of a disheartening moment when fights fall through uh, especially when you get you kind of get yourself amped up your training goes up a level and then when it falls through it is it is crap let's be, be honest and that does happen though especially on the UK circuit things like that do happen but you've got your yeah fight. it happens it happens everywhere you know what I mean like I had I, I, uh, it was, I had one sort of set up uh, overseas that, um, you know that I was excited to do, and then it fell through, and then uh, it just just logistically, like visas and stuff like this, it fell through. Just mm. not enough time to get things done, and and then the second one was all ready to go, the same sort of thing. But then um, the show got cancelled, so uh, it was it was just like, well, all right, that's no big deal. This, uh, and at that time, I had a few guys fighting, like a couple of weeks after a couple of weeks before pretty much like this one but um, but yeah it, it's, it's frustrating but you know that's I've seen I've, you know, I've been there before it's nothing it's nothing new these things happen do you know what I mean yeah so with the fights obviously falling through and you, you say you've got a lot of a lot more fighters now competing have you found that balance then of obviously coaching the guys getting guys prepped being with them for their fights etc and obviously getting the time for yourself to obviously focus on your yeah, fights I mean, I've been I've been pretty much doing that all the time anyway since since I've even started teaching and uh, as soon as we, you know, I, I mean really I only, I fell into teaching, I didn't, I didn't really like think about, you know, uh, oh that's, you know, I didn't leave school thinking that's what I wanted to do, it just kind of, you know, it just happened, it's just a few guys we, we would train, you know, you know, back in the day when I used to, when I first started training, you train in one place a couple of times and then there, there wasn't many you know, if there was maybe you count on your hand, if there was a full time, uh, you know, you should, you should, you should yeah, you, there was like two or three places that you could actually train full time. That was, that was, you know, even relevant to even even attempt to go to that were nearby. And now there's one on every street corner, so it's a lot easier for people now. But back in the day, it was everybody would get together and train to make the extra days up. So. And then it just become a, you know, like a, a natural transition for me to be the guy organising it. I just, I would just go right, well, you know, and then next thing I know, you got your own, you know, you got your own classes up, then you got your own gym up, then all of a sudden, then you got your own team. So I've been doing that kind of thing for a while. So teaching and, and like coaching and uh, and fighting all at the same time isn't really that big of a deal for me. It's, it's, it's I like it. It keeps me keeps me very active and it keeps my uh, you know, it keeps my uh, like uh, attention span really crisp because I can I can jump from all the things. So I think if I was just a full time fire, I think I'd be pretty moody. And I'd be pretty boring. <laughs> yeah. You know, anyway, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm, I think you have to be really selfish to to be full time fire. You know mm. what I mean? And you have to really you, know, you have to be concentrated on your own thing. And I think I think even like if you are a full time fighter, then I think you will spend some of the time coaching and helping out people anyway, do you know what I mean? Because you, you're not fighting every you know, month, so even between fights, you're going to be helping people out. I mean, that's just a natural uh, thing of the martial art. That's that's what it is. When I, when I first started martial arts, like it was always said to me by like uh, one of my coaches, Eric Paulson, uh, he would say, when you first start martial arts, dude, you're, you're going to start and you, your, your aim is to hurt people. 
and then uh, once you're in it for a while and you want to get to a high level of martial art you you want to heal people now whether that's like in, in most of the martial arts all the highest level martial arts is healing arts but whether I'm not talking about like just putting your hands on someone and, and magically like <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I'm talking about like you know, like you get a young kid that wants to come in and he's not doing too good, and you 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 get them on the mat and you you get them training, you clean up their life a little bit. They got something to do now. They got some purpose. You know, they're enjoying their time. So, it, it, for me, that that's that's the healing side of it. Do you know what I mean? Helping the, the people come up and, and do their stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's the healing side. So. Um, I enjoy that just as much as fighting as well. So, yeah, it's, it's all good. I, I love it all. I mean, it's my life. That's what I do, you know. Well, with the time off that you've had, have you had time then, obviously, to analyse yourself and maybe break yourself down to maybe bring out a new version of you, like to add more? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Like I mean, it. I'm always doing that. That's that's the martial art. You're always, yeah. you're always you, know, you know, cutting pieces off and shoving pieces back on and mm. re to polish and you know, re do stuff, try new things out. I mean, uh, and for me, yeah, yeah, I mean, I feel great. I feel I feel in, in better condition and better prepared than, than I have done, you know, since like when I, even before, you know, when I was like in my 20s, I feel much better now, you know. So, that's why, like, I don't get too caught up in the film of like announcing retirement or, mm. you know, or, you know, my comeback or any of that kind of you know, whatever propaganda, I just, you know, whatever, if something comes up, I think it's interesting, I'm going to do it, I mean, I've got, you know, um, I, I'm getting on a bit now, and, 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 but I feel good, I feel healthy, I feel, I feel, um, I can function at a, a good level, so I'll just get back out there, it sounds, it sounds like an interesting, uh, you know, question for me, like an interesting, um, equation, so let's, let's see if I can, if I can, uh, go out there and solve the puzzle, that's, 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 that's the, uh, you know, thing that I do, and all the time I've had off, I've not really had off. I've been, I've been teaching and training. I got guys getting ready for title fights, and they're making their MMA career debut, or they're they're doing their, you know, I got guys that are fighting twenty fights down the line. So this, I got a good set of guys that I train with that, you know, that I'm still keeping prepared, and and I'm I'm not just standing around outside the cage telling them what to do. I, I'm not like that. I'm not. I don't really talk about stuff, and I just tell them like, do this, do this, do. This. I'm in there doing it with them. Yeah. So, I've, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. I've. I mean, you call me in two years' time, I'll be telling you that I've made up my games much better than it was right now. So that's how that progresses. Because if you're not, if you're not growing, you're dying. So why would you, why would you sit still? You know, that's why I don't sit still. Not at all. Being around the UK MMA scene then for for as long as you have that it must be quite astonishing to see because for me especially seeing how fast the amateur standard and the amateur fighters are the quality that's around nowadays and how serious the guy the guys stay in there a lot longer as they would do back so let's go back even say five years five years ago you might have a couple of amateur bouts if you can find them and then you shoot off into the pro ranks and that's it and you, and you kind of cut your teeth in the pro ranks still but nowadays yeah. it seems like it's a, it's it's almost like it's a whole different league of its own the amateurs and it's exciting times with the UK MMAF and they do the world championships in Vegas etc and it's, yeah. it's it's a positive yeah. time really I think yeah, I think it's good. I think I think that attributes to sort of say my generation that are now, you know, um, been there and done it all, and, mm. and want to help everybody out and, and show the mistakes that everyone's making or made at that time. And now, you know, like most of us now, we've got a little gym opening, we've got full time gyms happening. So these kids can come in, and they haven't got a train like in Milton Keynes on a on a Tuesday night, and then you know down in London on a on a Wednesday, and then move over to Birmingham on, 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 on the weekend, they, they can train in one place all the time, every day, twice a day, three times a day, you know, all day long if they want, and, and so therefore they're getting, they're getting better quicker, but people, you know, the coaches like me are telling them, look, just chill out, because the standard's very high now, the guys that are training for, you know, like i got guys that are fighting amateur soon, and, and they're training just alongside all the professional guys all the professional rules. I mean, the only reason we used to fight professional rules straight away back in the day was because we wanted to get paid. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that's just how it was. But now we've got, you know, good facilities now for people to, to train at and everything. So it's, 
they, they get in the, they get in the training that we were craving for 10, 10, 15 years ago. Do you know what I mean? Where well, I had to go travel to California and, and to get that level of tuition. And you know now you know with the, with all the things that are going on here now, we we can access that real easily. And the kids have got it. You know we've been doing it 10, 15 years, so they've got all that experience to learn from. Yeah. So I think the amateur scene is very, very good. Plus, like the, it's good for the, uh, um, it's good for the promotions because they have to pay them. Yeah. And, uh, so they're eager, they're eager to come and, and fight, and you know, but uh, uh, and they're eager to have them on their shows. But yeah, I mean, the the level now is very good, very good, amazing. Yeah. In fact, I mean, some of the guys, you know, I wouldn't want to fight them at an amateur level. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I was thinking that there's amateurs that I train with, and you think, I uh, think to myself. I wish I had what you guys had, you know, say a few years back. But it, it, yeah. again, it's it's just a, it's just a sport. It's growing, you know. It's you need yeah, guys at the start. Really, really, really good. Yeah, you need guys at the start to help the guys now, and it's just it's where it's going to be. Obviously, they they went maybe in ten years time if they stick at it, will sit there with the new kids and go, "Oh, I wish I was good exactly, as them when yeah. I was their age." <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's the idea, you know. You don't want it to die. You want it to get better. So. Yeah. Your, my, for me, my students got to ex- excel what I've done and, 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 mm. and get better than me. You know, yeah. then, and then that way, their students to do the same, and then they continue to get better and grows even stronger. Yeah, I, I know. I have to say that your fight that you've taken here against Brendan, it's it's a hell of a fight to come back in after. I like, see so you've been training all the time. It's your first back fight in a little bit, uh, a couple of years, so to speak. But it's it's a great fight to have though, because Brendan is one of the top guys in the UK. I love the matchup. In fact, I like the card that the FCC have put on. You know, I think yeah. Tim Wilde and Delaney well, fights another barn burner. I, I, I'm yeah. looking forward to the card in general, really. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, the thing is, it's, it's, for me, it's like it's hard to get the opportunity to, to, to do fight. I don't want to fight. It's, I mean, I could go and like fight some guys for a couple of hundred quid and not really, um, you know, have a... Have a I gotta, I gotta want to train. My training's yeah. gotta go up a level, like you said. So if I got some, I don't know who the guy is, or it's not, it's gonna be like, uh, you know, someone who's not gonna challenge, you know, the training. Because mm-hmm. really, the fight happens all by itself. The, the, the fight will work its way it, itself out. But the train, I gotta be inspired in training, you know, to actually get out and do the extra bits I need to do. So if I, if I, if I know that I'm going up against someone who's, who's, who's at the, going to be bringing just as much then then the training becomes easier it becomes like it's not a chore it's not a, it's not a grind it's 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 work and it just needs to be done because you know that the, your opponent's doing exactly the same thing and he's bringing the level to the to the fight i think sometimes if you don't have the if the the opponent's not uh, you know a good opponent for you or you know you you can get lazy with it and then and then and then again if you if you're lazy with someone and they do beat you, then then it's your own fault, and they shouldn't have beat you. Then it then you're done. It's like so you got to have a, a formidable like challenge. Otherwise, yeah. what's the point of doing it? You know what I mean? Yeah, I I yeah. agree with you on that one fully. You know, and I think Brendan is the kind of guy who makes you pay attention to your training sessions and make sure. Yeah, of course, he's very good. He's good. He's good level uh, guy. And and to be honest, I, I was offered a fight on on FCC and it, and it fell out at featherweight. And then they the next fight they offered me was Brendan. So I was like, okay. I'm not one to really go, oh no, or, you know, I've never really turned many fights down, so then, you know, I'm up for it, that's fine, you know, I've been, I've been around the block, yeah, okay, I mean, and, then to, and to be honest, the, the pressure's all on him, you know what I mean, he's like, how old is he, what, 27, 25? Yeah, he's only young, you know, I can't remember like, how young he is now as well, he's, he's a young yeah, wit. He's, he's, he's like, I've got at least 10 years of age on him, you know, I've got, I've got more grey hairs than him, <laughs> you know, I'm an old man, I'm an old man, do you know what I mean, so... <laughs> What have I got to lose? I come back out. I haven't fought in two years. And they give me a title shot. You know I, what thought, I mean, yeah. I'm coming there with a who cares attitude and just going out there to. You know, I'm not making any more than this than what it is. I'm going out there to fight and test my skills as a fighter, it, uh, regardless of who's across the cage from me. I'm just going out there to, to to try try to see if my stuff still works. You know what I mean? So I've got no. And he's the champion. I'm the challenger, whatever. But he's like the young gun. I'm old man. I mean, imagine getting beaten by an old man. It's going to be terrible. Hey, they're not you know I mean? grey hairs. So, they're not grey hairs. Firstly, I have, I've, I, they're called hairs of wisdom. I have many of them. Okay, yeah. It's hairs <laughs> of wisdom. Yeah. All right. I call having, I have called having two kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pregnant. 
Plop. Where'd that grey hair come from? <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll, put, I'll agree with you that one. Yeah, ch children do have that effect on the hair. And look, I, I love the matchup anyway, but for yourself then, for 2016, I, I, I imagine then this fight's happening. Are you looking to just get regular fights again? Are you looking to get back in a swing? Yeah, well, I know. I mean, if the, if the opportunities come, I'll do them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I mean? I've got a good facility now where my gym's at. It's a great, you know, it's a, it's a really, I'm getting, I want to push it to the point where it's a great world-class facility. And, uh, you know, I'm going to take full advantage of it. You know what I mean? Mm. Take full advantage of all the guys that I've got training with us. I've got full advantage of the, 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 the setup we have. So, you know, why not? Let's, let's give it, let's give it another crack. And, and, uh, if the opportunities come, I, I want, I want to fight. You know, that's, that's always been the, the, that's the only reason I did fight in the first place because you're training and it's yeah. like, well, does this work? I want to know if it <laughs> works still. So it's the same thing. You know what I mean? And are you looking to do? A, are you looking to stay at featherweight? Or are, you, are you happy to maybe do? F what, yeah, like, I don't care. Like, this this fight, I, I like, probably made weight three weeks ago. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, lightweight's been good. You know, it's like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe uh, featherweight, featherweight, probably where I should be at. But yeah. that's a, another reason why the matchup with Brendan was good. I know he's fought featherweight. I think that's why he wanted to fight me as well. He knows I'm not going to walk in there massive. Yeah. I'm not going to walk in there 90 kilo, you know what yeah. I mean, or 80 kilo. I'm not going to be that massive. Do you know what I mean? And I think we're getting to the point now that we're the evolve the the evolution of the sport now. I think is getting there where we're we're starting to see the weight shift. You know what I mean? They've done it at one FC. Yeah. Obviously, McGregor's fighting at 70, and yeah. we're seeing the the pull away from the whole unhealthiness of that weight cut. Do you know what I mean? It I think is. we're seeing that now. A lot of guys, you know, getting a bit switched on to that, and I think we're seeing it. So, and again, if the weight weight cuts are changing, it just means everybody moves up a category. Let's not worry about like starving ourselves and, and freaking, you know, like just trying to squeeze ourselves dry in a sauna. You know, stop all that stupidness, or even going to beyond the measures of like, you know, taking blood out of your system and just to get on a scale. I mean. It's crazy. It's just not yeah. good for you. you know what I mean? It is. Really it's, not good for you. It's staggering. Some I mean, of the some of the lengths people will go to. I, I exactly, myself, yeah. you know, I've I killed myself trying to make weight one time, and it was, you know, what I, I shouldn't have even stepped in the cage, but I did. Yeah, exactly. But it was it's dangerous. It was dangerous. Yeah, it was because it it was the it was the implications of what the long term effects could have had if, for example, I'd went in and hit, say he had smoked me with like a head kick. It's that yeah. effect on the brain, which it didn't happen, frankly, but at the same time, it's one of them ones where it could, you don't know what could have happened. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it all. I mean, we, when we weight cut it back in the day, I mean, when I used to, I used to fight a, a, a well away with me, you know, stand on the scales with me lunch. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we started the, what's, this cutting weight stuff, and I'm like, well, what's that? And then we're just investigating the stuff that we used to do was crazy, just crazy. I mean, I've, I've gone in the sauna at like 72 kilos to get to 66 and it was like, you know, we didn't have any knowledge of what to do. We, we, we had to find out by, you know, like, you know, by making the mistakes. And, yeah. It's, and, it's uh, crazy. So, you know, lucky enough, I can teach that to the youngsters that are coming in now and I think, you know, I think, like, that's why I did the fight. Like, Brendan, I know, is, is, is sometimes, you know, when he fights on Bama and stuff, he's going to fight a featherweight. So, you know, lightweight for the pair of us is, is probably easier to do, you know. And it's a healthy fight for the pair of you, which is key, you know. Yeah, the, exactly. You get a better performance out of the pair of you as well if you're, you're fitter, yeah, you're healthier. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love the yeah, matchup was, anyway, mate. I, as soon as I saw like, When I get up on Friday morning, I can have a, you know, I can have a shot of wheatgrass and I'll be sweet to, to jump on the scales. And that's the, that's all that matters. And, I, I mean, honestly, I, I look forward to the fight. Honestly, it, when I saw the fight card itself, I, I was... Well, actually, Adams, you know, he does actually do pretty good cards, to be fair, FCC. And yeah, yeah. It's one of them promotions where I don't think Adams realises how it's a good card and good promotion that he does, but he just doesn't put it out there enough, I feel, on the UK scene. I think he could do, I think he could do a bit more on that side of things. I don't think he gets the credit it deserves, really, as well. Yeah, no, it's a good show. I've been up there, I think, once before, and it, and it was a good show. That's, again, another reason why um, I took the fight. Um, I mean... The fights up north are, are, are um, a bit hard to sort of sell to people down here. They come up and, yeah. and watch. Yeah. But um, but other than that, yeah, it's a great show. I mean, you know, for me, the, it's the fight that intrigues me. You know, so yeah. um, 
and again here yeah, I've been to one of them before and it was it was sweet it, was, it should it should be a good show and ladies and gentlemen it is on this weekend if you haven't got tickets tough but if you do live in the area if there is any tickets contact FCC on their Facebook page or Adam Tay on Facebook see if there is any I don't I doubt there is any to be fair because they usually do sell out pretty well and like I said we've got David here fighting Brendan. It's going to be an absolute cracking fight. Two very skilled fighters. David, before I let you go, though, can you give everyone at home uh, like a shout out for your social media so people can maybe jump on and like also your gym, where your gym is, how they contact you if they want to train and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you want to uh, on the Facebook, uh, I'm on the Crossface. Just look up Crossface Training Center. That's that's my gym. Um, um, you can look me up on uh, Instagram and stuff. What I'm going to do after this fight, I swear I was going to be putting out um, all the stuff I did up to the weight, uh, the, the weigh-ins and my, my, my diet and stuff like that. It's going to come out soon. So I've been using some interesting products, some nice nutrient-dense uh, organic products for this, um, this, this, this fight camp. So uh, that's all going to be coming out on my Instagram and my Facebook. So... Yeah, it's not it's not hard to find me. It's just look up Crossface Training Center, put my name in these in Instagram, and I'm sure you'll come stumbling across some some of the uh, stuff of Margie Mushon. So yeah, well, hook me up on there and come on down. Spot on. Yeah, exactly. Go down, train, learn, and develop your skills. Even if you don't want to compete and just want to get fit and actually initiate your brain, you know, learn some new skills and techniques in life. Go down there, of course, get training. Yeah. Of course, it's always like you, you don't have to be the champion. You know what I mean when yeah. you're training, but you can stand alongside them, knowing that the belt that's around their waist, you've having you've had an involvement with helping them train. You know exactly, so you can, huge you can, part, you can, my you friend. And you said there about nutrients and stuff. Have you had any sponsors then that have helped you out? Then have you had any people? Yeah, I've had a bunch of stuff, um, uh, but again, they didn't help me out that much, so they don't need to be mentioned. But it'll be out <laughs> after the fight when I put it out there. Don't worry. Don't no worry. And then do you want to give a shout out? If they want to you... mention, if they want to mention, then they need to pay more money. Yes, there you go. That's what that's I do. That's how it works. You know what I mean? That's yeah. how it works. That should work that way, my friend. And what about training partners then that have helped you out in your fight camp and stuff? Yeah, all my guys, all my guys on my team are great. You know, we have a great jiu-jitsu team worldwide that's helped me throughout the years anyway. Icon jiu-jitsu team. Uh, that's headed up by my my uh, grandmaster Zay Marcelo. Obviously, the guys that have um, always been there for me in California, like Paulson. We've had them over this this this. Uh, uh, we just had them because UFC was over, so we had a bunch of their guys over. Um, so yes, yeah, so everyone has been helping me train. Had a little bit of um, Matt Miller time yesterday as well. That was always good to do a bit of wrestling with Matt. So uh, yeah, everyone on my team, like I got my guys to watch out for as well Charlie Leary's going to be fighting soon in the next few weeks he should have been on this card but I don't think anyone wanted to fight him um, so yeah and, and look at my team Team Crossface we've got bunches of bunches of um, amateurs and, and guys that are breaking through the amateur ranks and hitting the professional ranks soon and we've got a ton of guys coming so watch out we're, we're, we're on a mission so keep an eye out folks you see, you hear the name you got to think okay one, that's one of David Lee's boys there I'll have to get all girls I'm not sexist obviously but keep an eye out for them alright uh, uh, David <laughs> thank you very much for coming on to talk it's cool. been great chatting to you right. have a great fight and Pleasure. a great weekend man yeah I will do I look forward to it